Hey, John here. Let's look at how to install Ice Storm and uh, Verilator and GTK Wave on a Raspberry Pi 4 so we can do some FPGA development. I put together this GitHub repo. We've got the instructions and stuff. This is pretty much uh, the same sort of thing you find around the internet on other sites. The, the, the way you download and install the tools, this is a pretty much stock thing to do here, all right? So I'm going to walk through the process of doing this on a Pi 4, and we're going to use it to program the Ice Stick Evaluation Board, which is commonly available all over the place. It's a pretty cheap FPGA Evaluation Board. There's other ones out there as well that you could probably use the same uh, overall approach with, but... The Ice Storm tools in particular were originally designed to program these Lattice FPGA chips, so this is a pretty good choice because it's been supported a long time. You're not likely to run into any weird errors. So to do this, it's pretty straightforward. you got to make sure that you have all the prerequisite libraries on your Pi. So I'm going to just cut and paste these lines, one at a, each group at a time, into my Raspberry Pi. This window here is running on my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and install those libraries. Now, before I download all the tools, I'm going to make a directory in my home directory and put them all in there so I don't litter up the whole place, all right? And then we're going to come down here and download the tools from GitHub from the various uh, developers, the three parts that we need to compile the Verilog code. And I'm going to just build it. I'm going to say use three of the CPUs on the Pi so the thing builds faster than it would otherwise. Now, I've noticed we get an awful lot of warnings from these programs when they build. I haven't noticed any problems as a result of it. After about an hour, it finishes building. We want to go ahead and install Verilator and GTK Wave so we can do simulations with our Verilog code. All right, so when that's done, make sure that you're in your FPGA directory or wherever you decided to put your stuff so you're not buried by accident in the OSIS subdirectory or something like that, all right? Then come down here and you can clone the example program. It's a little blinky test program. If you want and then you can CD in the directory and you can compile it now this is gonna build it to run on the iStick. stick so if you have an iStick stick evaluation board that would compile it then you can just do a make burn if it's plugged into the uh, Pi when that's done you should see the blinky running in a pattern like this now down here I also show you how to run a simulation of this thing all right now you're gonna go in and type make v top instead of just make and this will run verilator to create a c plus plus application out of the verilog code all right now that's built and we can run it with a minus t option and that'll create a trace file that creates this wave.vcd file because we installed GTK Wave, we can run GTK Wave. And we can then look at what's happening inside the circuit design in simulation. So I'm going to open up this top level module. And I'm going to open up this guy down inside here. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later. But the short of it is, if this is the top level module, which I called top, you can see it's inputs and outputs in here, as well as any variables inside that module. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the clock and the counter. The counter is a variable inside the app. If you hold on shift and use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out here. All right, so I don't have a lot of control over the font, which is a little bit small for my taste, but hey, this is way better than nothing. The uh, you can see the counter counting as a zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and it counts on the rising edge of each one of these clock pulses. So, this is a super trivial app. Let's go ahead and look at the source here. Put GTK Wave in the background. Here's your top, 
And this is what we're watching, okay? We ran it in simulation. The clock and the counter are these variables right, this variable right here, okay? That's what we're looking at in GTK Wave. And in this code simply says, every time there's a positive edge on the clock, set the counter equal to counter plus one. Now, while we're here looking around, let's have a look, see at this file right here. This is the file that we need for Verilator to work. You're responsible to create a C++ program that has a main in it, but this is a boilerplate line that if you look at the Verilator docs, it just says do this, and you create your top level object. The word here, top, is because top was the name of the module we were just looking at. And the big V here was created by Verilator. So that's the Verilator version of the top level module. Then down here is any code you want to write. The code I put in here, when I have a minus T option, I turn on the trace system. Again, this is boilerplate. So I just copied this off of Verilator, and it says open a file. I just went ahead and just made it open wave.vcd. If you want an argument for that, knock yourself out. I just use that every time and overwrite it every time I run it. So the short of it is you got to create your an instance of your top-level module, okay? Then you can do whatever you want. These are subroutines we'll look at in a second. They're very short. Then when you're done, you close the log file, finalize the simulation, and then delete the object that we created for the trace. Delete the top module, and we're done. Okay? So that leaves us with reset and run. And what you see here is this module doesn't have anything to do for reset. I just stubbed that in for later. And it really just calls this run function here. And this is really what comes down to what it means to run a simulation, all right? Now, in Verilator, your thing controlling the simulation is a C++ app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a limit. What did I do? I passed in some limit down here, like a 1,000, okay? And so I go into a loop that's going to iterate a 1,000 times. And each time I do this, I'm going to set clock to 1. And then I'm going to wait. And then I'm going to set clock to 0 and then I'm going to wait, all right? So that's just going to run in a loop. That generates my square wave clock. Well, what's this, this tick function? Well, that's this guy up here. The tick function here is, uh, this is the thing that actually does the simulation inside Verilator, okay? Now, we'll talk more about what it means to do all this in Verilator, but the short of it is, you want to evaluate the current state of everything in the Verilog code, and I will keep track of the current time this time is used for the waveform, okay, as you can see down here. And I ask if I have a waveform uh, log file, go ahead and call dump and give it a timestamp for that dump. That's really all that's going on here. So without getting too far into the details of Verilog and simulation and all this other stuff, this is the essence of how to install these modules, how to use them, how to run them with a simple Blinky test app. Thanks for watching. See you next time.